As the war in the Middle East approaches its one year mark, you must have noticed that major global powers have demonstrated their inability to halt or significantly influence the ongoing fighting. But why is that happening? Let's find out. I am Shivangi and you are watching India TV. The latest attempt at negotiations aimed at preventing an all-out war between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon is fraught with uncertainty, especially following the Israeli killing of Hassan Nasrallah, Hezbollah's long-serving leader. The assassination of Nasrallah leaves a significant leadership void within Hezbollah likely to be difficult to fill and poses serious ramifications for Iran, which is Hezbollah's chief ally. Before that, efforts to negotiate an end to the conflict between Israel and Hamas have been marked by intermittent progress, often heralded by the Biden administration as imminent breakthroughs that ultimately falter. But that's not new because for decades the United States have been the primary actor capable of exerting constructive pressure on both Israel and Arab states. Historic peace agreements such as the Camp David Accords in 1978 and the Israel-Jordan Peace Treaty in 1994 were facilitated by American diplomacy. However, the geopolitical context has shifted significantly since those times. Today, America's ability to influence Iran and its proxies such as Hezbollah is significantly reduced. Organizations like Hamas and Hezbollah are designated as terrorist entities by the United States and operate largely beyond the scope of American diplomatic reach. Now, while the US retains considerable leverage over Israel through military aid, illustrated by the recent $15 billion package, this support is unlikely to waver due to long-standing strategic alliances and shared democratic values. Israel's extensive military response in Gaza following the October 7 Hamas attack has elicited only mild criticisms from the Biden administration. However, US support for Israel remains steadfast, even as Palestinian casualties escalate, with many being civilians. Meanwhile, other global powers have largely taken a backseat as violence escalates. China, which is heavily invested in Iranian oil and interested in weakening the American-led order, shows little inclination to act as a peacemaker. Similarly, Russia lacks the desire to engage, particularly with US elections approaching, preferring to observe any signs of American decline. Now, if we talk about the Middle East, then we must note that within the region, no power possesses the requisite strength or commitment to militarily confront Israel. Iran remains cautious, understanding that a full-scale war could threaten its regime. Egypt is wary of a refugee influx and while Saudi Arabia supports a Palestinian state, it is unwilling to sacrifice its citizens for that cause. The events of October 7 serve as a culmination of the manipulative strategies employed by both Arab and Israeli leaders regarding Palestinian statehood aspirations. A year later, there is still no clear path to resolution. So what we can sense is that effective diplomacy that could exert pressure on Hamas, Hezbollah and Israel simultaneously is non-existent. This disarray has hindered any efforts to resolve the Israel-Hamas conflict with a global consensus on peace or even a ceasefire remaining elusive. Now, as Israel begins its ground offensive in Lebanon, it is yet to be seen how international powers react and what is going to be the next course of action. What are your views? Do comment and let us know. Till then, keep watching India TV.